Hi, my name is Steven. It is I, Kevin. And I am David, the eldest champion. And we are the Brothers Born. We invite you to bear witness as this most unlikely of throwdowns is about to commence. Welcome to another edition of Unlikely Throwdowns with Steven. That's me. Uh, Kevin. You sound so uncertain. <laughs> like, am I Kevin? I don't know. <laughs> it's right. We uh, so Dave's not with us again today, but we have our surrogate brother, uh, Brendan Sullivan. He's basically a brother's born, so he is going to be our judge today for this. I, I, I do think he's been a guest in our stuff more than anybody else, actually. Yes, I think so as well. And honestly, this season he's been on the show more than David has. So <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Usually, I get a text a half hour before you start. Hey, you free? <laughs> That's about how it went. I texted him last night because I thought we were going to do it last night at like eleven. I was like, "You in bed?" And he just didn't respond. Like he must be in bed still. So anyway, <laughs> today is special. We are doing an unlikely throwdown in dedication to someone. Kevin, please elaborate. So, um. At the time of this recording, in recent events, uh, the actor Carl Weathers has passed away. Um, we actually did an unlikely throwdown that featured a film in which one of his characters in. However, we didn't feature his character. But uh, we decided this time, uh, Steve and I are both going to pick a character that has been portrayed by Carl Weathers. Uh, <laughs> see how this goes. So, um, Brendan, do you know who Carl Weathers is? Um, I've heard... Him more as a uh, like a voice actor. I, I recognize oh, his yeah. voice because he's got a like a really recognizable voice. Yeah, he's also a football player, a retired football player. Um, yeah, he was. Yeah, he fact, was so football player. That is cool too. Well, we each have a character represented by um a, a character that Carl's weather Carl Weathers, Carl's weather, Carl Weathers portrayed, and uh, I guess I'll try to go first here. My character, Brendan, and Kevin, uh, he's a G.I. Joe type of action figure, though he isn't G.I. Joe because this particular franchise, they wanted to use G.I. Joe, but Hasbro said, we don't like the way you're portraying G.I. Joe. You can't use him. So they made up their own version of G.I. Joe for this particular movie. Uh, this movie's franchise has four main movies and a couple side movies. This character is featured in two of them. And he's also in a couple of the side side stories. He is a soldier. Um, obviously from G.I. Joe. He is... Uh... Yeah, that's what I'm going to give you right now. <laughs> that's <laughs> any, all you uh, got. That's all I got right now. <laughs> uh, Brendan, any guesses? I, I have no idea. He is from... I'll tell you the movie's franchise he's from. He is from the franchise Toy Story. Oh, uh, okay. So is he the um the like the green dudes? Green dudes in the first movie, and then it, later on it becomes he actually gets a name by Toy Story Four. I um, didn't see Toy Story Four, so I have no idea oh, who man. that would be. He's also name... in Toy Story Terror or something or other like that. Toy Story of Terror, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um his name the character's name is Combat Carl. Which is funny because Carl Weathers portrayed him. But he didn't actually portray him in the first film, I don't think. Um, so it's not even combat Carl in the first film. It's just like a sergeant or soldier guy. But we're going to, in the effort to like have more information at my fingertips, we're going to include the character from the first Toy Story film. Because Isn't that character from Toy Story just a toy soldier? Yeah, but combat Carl's an evolution of well, that. So, so what about combat Carl Jr.? I hope you hope I'm, I'm going to, if you don't, if, with, I hope you're okay with this. Normally, we don't like resources. I think in this situation, I have both of them. I think okay. that's fair. I think that's fair. I mean, he's a toy, so... Yeah, so I have Combat <laughs> Carl, who's a 12-inch action figure, similar to the old G.I. Joes, and Carl, Combat Carl Jr., who's more like like what Kevin and I grew up playing, the six, like five to six-inch G.I. Joes. Three, 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 four. Three, whatever. The, the, the little guys. 
Uh, All right. So I'm going to have I'm going to represent both of them in this throwdown. I think that is fair considering I am an action figure. Okay. All right. So my character. So my first thought, of course, Carl Weathers was either Apollo Creed or uh, Major Dylan from the Predator. But I figured I didn't want to use either one of those. That seemed too obvious. Um, which kind of narrowed it down. There was not a lot going on. I thought about Grief Car Carga from Mandalorian, but there's not a lot of information on him. So I picked another character that also has not a lot of information about. <laughs> there you go. And it's from a TV. Sh it's from a series I have never actually watched. <laughs> so oh, I know nothing about this character, but it looks cool. So, um, he is uh, it, it's Combat Carl, of course, part of Pixar, which is part of Disney. Um, I believe this character is for a show that is also amongst the Disney family. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, let's see. Let's find a little history here. Um, so my character is a member of the Magic of High Commission. Um, but however, when they had their meetings, he is unable to attend the meetings in person because of his large size. Um, uh, so he has to communicate through a crystal ball. Um, he's appeared in several episodes of this particular franchise, which is called Star versus the Evil or something about the yeah Star versus the, Star versus the Forces of Evil. Star versus the Forces of Evil. Star versus okay. Forces I've, of Evil. I've heard of that show. Yeah, I've heard of it. I never watched it, though. Um, a character, of course, played by, is voiced by Carl Weathers. Um, he's kind of like this hunchbacked, humanoid-looking being with like a skull-shaped face, but he's also the size of a galaxy, so... Size of a galaxy. <laughs> he's the size of a galaxy. Versus which is why he, toys. Which is why he can't attend meetings with this... Um, this the uh magic con whatever these guys are because he's too big okay um, i definitely I don't know who this character is yeah i know so neither one just... of you do is so so this character's name is um omnitraxis prime that's a cool name <laughs> it's that's... a cool name like yes. he's omni he's everywhere he's very godlike man that's how's well, he gonna he is how's carl, he's, um... carl combat carl supposed to compete with this guy i don't think he does steve <laughs> So he he has he is a master of space time is what he is what his he's in charge of in this universe. Um, not right. to be confused with Father Time, who's this mastery has mastery over time. Time it's a different character. So what a matchup! You know, we could have simplified this. I could have done Apollo <laughs> Creed. You could have done Dylan, and it would have been like great. But no, we had to be like, oh, we come back. Let's pick these the really obscure. Prime. Let's pick these obscure characters that have like very little parts to play in their <laughs> in their franchises. Like my Pixar wiki thing is like not big at all. It's so small. But oh, mine isn't know, either. Mine isn't we, either. We will make this work. Um, let's take a break so I can kind of just formulate my thoughts, and then I'm ready to come. I'm ready to come at you, man. A wise man once said, cash rules everything around me. It's all about the money. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Now, the Brothers Born are definitely not part of the Wu-Tang Clan. But the sentiment, well, it's still true. When it comes down to it, making the content that we do can have some costs when it comes to equipment and certain fees. This is where you come in as a listener. No obligation here. But if you do like what we have and you would like to contribute a little bit of funds our way so we can improve our content, um, there's three different tiers of payment which you can use. The first one is a simple, cheap tier of 99 cents. Not too bad. Uh, next tier would be 4.99, or if you're straight balling, 9.99 for the third tier. Now there's no obligation here. We're gonna do the content either way, but we definitely would appreciate a little uh, help. Thank you in advance, and we look forward to providing more content for you. Welcome back. Uh, we've got two, um, one mighty, uh, one small mighty fight versus one very large. Uh, there is Steve <laughs> is Combat Carl, and Kevin has Omnitraxis Prime from Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Let's see how this goes. Um, legit. I feel like I should watch this show now. Though. It does like, look really cool. It's got a lot of good actors in it too. Actually, I've seen a couple episodes uh, of it. It didn't seem bad. Arya used to watch a little bit. All right, Kevin, why don't you go first and just tell me what I'm up against here? Okay, well, let me go into his personality. He doesn't really actually have his. He's not as as, as 
there wasn't a lot as far as his abilities because he's not like a main character or anything like that. Um, but uh, this he, he has very imposing stature. Um, obviously because he's a size of a galaxy. However, he is actually very friendly and he's kind of you know kind of goofy and friendly towards the uh, the people that he helps. Um, he calls himself the space time guy. Um, he's willing to help people with space time related problems. Um, however, he can be serious if the situation requires it. Um, he is a part of the, like I said, Commission of Magic or, yeah, the Commission of Magic. Uh, sorry, Magic High Commission is part of that, whatever that means. Um, he doesn't like monsters. Uh, and, um, that's really pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> um, All right. <laughs> well, we got he, something in common because Combat Carl doesn't like monsters either, in reference to Sid, the kid who blows up and breaks up toys in the first Toy Story film. Um, that's true because he gets blown up by Sid. Yes. But that <laughs> leads me to his first ability that you can't deny. My man Combat Carl gets blown up. He's still kicking, even if he's just a head or an arm. He's still alive doing his own thing. So <laughs> I mean, he's a that's, toy. That's pretty. Remarkable, I'd say. What was um, it? Toy Story Terror? He's like runs around the whole thing without a hand. Yes, I think that's in reference to his character in Predator and some other character he is in that um, lost an arm. I forgot who it was, but yeah. So combat, Carl. We got big Carl, little Carl. They are really, really good at using paper clips to manipulate things. They can pick locks with paper clips and use them as a <laughs> makeshift weapon. Uh, they. They can remove their body parts, and they're still fine um, because they're toys. So that's pretty awesome. And um, his little story: his arm was eaten by a like a an iguana, iguana iguana named Mister Jones, um, which that is a reference to whatever whatever movie that's. I don't remember what it's from, but that is a reference to some other thing he's involved with. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what? I think I know what it was because wasn't he in Happy Gilmore? Yes, Chubbs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chubbs. That's yep, what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was yeah, Chubbs yeah. in Happy Gilmore, and and the, and the Predator took off his arm. In, yeah, uh, in the, in the Predator. Yeah. So that's yeah, it's a reference to those two characters. That's why his arm is missing. I think they did that on purpose because of who other characters he's played. Um, he has he's really good at like safety. You know, like like in a way to kind of make fun of GI Joe, they have like these PSAs, Combat Carl PSAs. That are on the the Blu-ray release of Toy Story of Terror, so they do like you know knowing is half the battle those kinds of things. So he's very aware of kids, and he loves you know he's there to help out kids, um, and helps he helps Woody and Buzz and all them take down Sid, freak him out a little bit, and he's really there. he's a toy, so he's there to please people and make them happy and like you know be a, a creative outlet for young minds. So that's pretty cool. So we both have characters that are friendly. Yes. I'd say, well, I, he kind of gets the get guys that get he's not much. friendly, but he, uh, cause he's like tough soldier man, but yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't get into my character's powers and abilities, which I found four. Okay. Um, lay them on me. Uh, space time manipulation. So he's okay. a master of time space. So he, basically his job is to like fix like time loops and that sort of thing that are like met. So he, he fixes space time related problems such as time loops. Um, those are especially uh, inside of his body is a crystal field of um, it's called the crystal fields of interwoven continuum. So if a person were to go Say inside again, his please. body, crystal, crystal fields, fields of... of interwoven continuum. Whoa. Um, so if like a person were to go inside, they can uh, view or perceive all their indiv like all their individual timelines. So it's like a multiverse with inside like his body That's in crazy. a way. That's wild. Um, Size manipulation, so he can expand and shrink his body to some degree. Uh, typically, he's about the size of a galaxy. Typically. He can't shrink himself enough to interact with others, but he's still pretty large. Um, intangibility, uh, so he can like go pass through solid objects and things. And then uh, shape shifting. Um, I guess there's one point he turns himself into a giant fist. That's all I got. Those are the things I got. That's pretty incredible. Now we are, Brendan. Need I remind you? We've we've done this dance before, where we have a very big character versus a very small character, with the giant robots versus uh, like a normal sized human. Now the ratio is even wider 
and now we're dealing with a galaxy sized being and an action figure so like it might be hard for him to find combat carl and combat carl jr because they're so little and finite uh, compared to his massiveness so uh, kind of agree but he can also see all time <laughs> so i imagine he's not relevant able to see <laughs> not relevant <laughs> <laughs> but again i go back to that so um you know in the original toy story the soldier man his head gets removed and he becomes jingle joe the gi joe head goes on this like it's like a weird hybrid i don't know a couple toys put together and you know he's kicking it. he's just got his head but he's got these other body parts so let's say if i may we take combat carl's head and put it on something bigger. <laughs> then we're galaxy. dealing with like let's put combat Carl's head. Let's put it on the sun, okay? And then we That's have still not bigger than a galaxy. <laughs> also, wouldn't that just melt the head? Not important, dude. So we put it on the sun, <laughs> and then now we have this celestial body up against the galaxy. I and he he can self destruct, perhaps cause a black hole. Galaxy's gone. Just saying, I'm stretching it a little bit here, but I think it it's feasible. One black hole is a lot smaller than a galaxy. But it's kind of like, you know, you poke a hole in space time and everything gets sucked through, right? So eventually it's going to, bye bye, galaxy man. Done, so. <laughs> Physics. I don't think that's how black holes work, to be honest. Physics. <laughs> is, that, is that in the realm of combat Carl's powers? <laughs> Can he, yeah, uh, his head could be attached to anything and then he suddenly controls that thing. That is pretty awesome, actually. I, so I, I'll fine. relent that, but the sun would just vaporize his head. All right, fine. Let's take it. Let's put it on top of a like some other big thing that's in the universe, <laughs> <laughs> like a different galaxy. <laughs> now, I mean, my character is not a galaxy; it's just the size of the galaxy. So that does okay. There you go. So I'm, <laughs> the sun explodes with the Carl Van Carl head on it. And then <laughs> there's no who would melt though in the sun. <laughs> It does the guy in. <laughs> That's my argument. You can't you can't top that. Oh, but like even if you put Kong of a Carol put put his head on top of something like huge and like, galaxy size, my dude can you know, th this dude can phase through solid matter, so yeah, kind of Well matter. it's a good thing that the sun is the sun gas? Isn't it gas? It's not solid <laughs> matter, right? Brendan, help me out here. <laughs> I mean, it's just hydrogen going through nuclear fusion over and over. So there you I mean, go. So not solid. It's plasma, sort of solid. Um, it's still a state of matter. This this leads me to a question. Okay, okay, totally sidebarring, but I'm actually genuinely curious. You know how like the first few planets are like rocks, and then the like Jupiter and Saturn are like gas, like the, yeah. what, the what do they call them? The, um, gas giants. Yes, gas giants. So let's say, barring, forget all temperature and, like, ability to breathe and, like, that kind of stuff. If you drop someone on top of Jupiter, would they just fall all the way through the planet? Like, well, no, because there's gravity, so they have gra to stop in the there, middle. There's a lot of gravity, because it's huge. So, but I'm saying, like, there's no physical matter as far, like, I'm just curious, since it's a gas giant. Like assuming you I mean, could if you, survive, if you just, I mean, if assuming you could survive, I'm assuming you could just jet through it if you had enough force to resist the gravity. But I think the gravity would just crush because it's like so big. Because like, yeah. the bigger a thing is, the bigger its gravity is. So, so here's my next thing: combat Carl's head, very little. <laughs> it doesn't have a lot of gravity pulling. It has gravity pulling, but it's very little. It's not that <laughs> That's big. Not how gravity so, works, but okay. so he could he could attach himself to Jupiter. How is he going to attach himself to Jupiter to begin with? It's a gas giant. How does he attach himself to it? Not relevant. <laughs> I'm just saying, dude. His head, he controls anything his head goes on. So that is a, that is his superpower. <laughs> is that a fact? That's his, it's, it's, it's as listed as his power? Uh, I think it's pretty well inferred. I mean... <laughs> it's very well inferred. <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't know how to go with this battle. This is we 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 really should have thought this one through a little bit better. Yeah, man. <laughs> because, <laughs> all like, right. I don't think either one of our characters can really do much of anything. To be <laughs> one's honest. too big, one's too little. All right, yeah, give me. It, 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 and this guy, I mean, he solves like time problems, but he doesn't like. He's not like fighting people and stuff. <laughs> like he could well, maybe he's too big. Combat Carl solves problems of the heart, and like 
kid feuds and stuff. So what's more important I mean, to you? Well, see, along that time, along of that, those lines, um, I'm going to track this prime. In one of the episodes, I forgot his name. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? Then now I just remember. <laughs> in one of the episodes, um, the whole episode is him helping uh the the star character star, uh, solve a math problem, which the is whole... she's having difficult. <laughs> yeah, she can't solve a math problem, and so he's helping her, like guiding her along the way. He's like, I'm her. one giant math problem. Figure me out. <laughs> so yeah, so so he you know he he likes to help kids and stuff too. All right. Hit me with your quote game. So is this... I don't think I have any quotes, actually. So is this like a battle where they're fighting, or is it a battle of like winning the hearts and minds of like a child? Oh, there we go. <laughs> it must change the dynamic, change the field here. Because That would is... probably be the better, because in terms of fight, it's just not even <laughs> it's, in the yeah, same. It's, I think it's kind of a non-existent fight. Um... All right. So there we go. That's good. So let's, let's, let's use that angle. Combat Carl, you know, he helps... He, you know, he assists in the rescuing of toys from the villain Sid. Um, I don't remember Toy Story of Terror very well, but uh, he plays a your big role in there. He helps like Jesse get over her fear that's of right. being enclosed and and all that. Yes, yeah, so he helps other toys come to terms with who they are. Helps them like be comfortable with their identity and things. Um, and in Toy Story 4, he, there's like different outfits. There's like Jill Sergeant, normal combat Carl. There's a couple different ones. And uh, they assist Bo Peep. He's, so he's helping another toy, mending the hearts of other toys who feel broken or lost. Um, he's really good at that. And um, that, I'm, I'm going to go with that. And, and I will say that this character, even though he he doesn't particularly like monsters and what they do, he, at the same time, he does feel regret over like how monsters have been persecuted over the years so he's got empathy um and you know like say he helps star with you know solving a math problem he just seems to kind of like generally just kind of chill kind of nice dude even though he has a giant skull for a head so All i right. guess it's a battle of niceness and i'm, I'm gonna hit you with a quote and i, I don't i really don't at least don't whether, i have no quotes whether we're doing the battle of niceness or the battle of physical fighting. Either way, either type of battle. Um, Combat Carl always speaks in third person. And he says, quote, Combat Carl never gives up. Combat Carl finds a way. End quote. I rest my case there. He That's never true. gives up and he <laughs> finds a way. I love that in Jesse's, he's like, say it after me. And Jesse's like, Combat Carl. And he's like, you're not Combat Carl. <laughs> So. That's a good quote. The only thing I have is like I'm the I'm the space time guy. Is the only point I can find right now. I mean, he has quotes. I just forgot to look them up. All right, all right. So in the battle of capturing the hearts and minds of children, or is it children specifically? Just, it, it no, just anyone. hearts and minds of beings. I, I would say because or children. I don't, whatever you think, you're the judge. So <laughs> combat Carl definitely has his merits with uh, helping the downtrodden but i do have to say his seems to be on a lower scale than you know mr uh omnitrix prime who can go anywhere Omnit omnitraxis prime omnitraxis and uh he, he i mean he can go into other timelines and dimensions and help people in multiple so it's kind of the, the scale of their help is kind of off the charts for one, and then he's more the little people for the other. So it's kind of like big picture, little picture. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to judge these ones. But because I'm biased against Steve, I'm going to go. <laughs> you can't let that be an argument. That is not. No. Order in the court. Objection, Your Honor. Objection. Objection. Uh, I, this one's because this one is hard to choose because if in a fight it's no contest the the, 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 the the you're not beating a galaxy if you're a toy if his head's attached to a celestial body it doesn't matter what it's attached to it would have to be attached to the big bang for it to do anything <laughs> and in terms of capturing the hearts it's it's more of like big or little so so I guess you can make the argument that like not really they're not tie per se, but they're they win in different categories. 
Yeah, that's true. Like, uh, if, if you're tr if you're trying to help, like the little people, I guess the 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 soldier pipe do a better job. Where, but even though the bunny guy, he did help her with her math math homework. So, I guess he can do both. All right. So, is, are you saying there is no winner here, Brendan? Judge. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a tie. I think the real win is the <laughs> Carl Weathers voice, both of them. Yes, that is he is yeah, the winner. That's true. He is the winner, and the people are the winner, right? True. So, so um, we'll, we'll give this one a tie just because it's fair, fair enough. So outrageous. <laughs> if it was if it was a fight, then it's one hundred percent the the Galaxy guy. <laughs> Fair enough. A draw for the Carl Weathers episode. You know, I'm comfortable. I don't like draws typically, but because we're dealing with a real person who recently passed and um, uh, who touched the hearts of many with the various in his football career, in his film career, in his voice acting career, um, I think that, you know, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. The Combat Carl holds a place in our heart. Um, the Traxxas Prime holds a place in our heart. I, uh, I love the Predator movie. Even though his character is kind of a douchebag in that movie, I still appreciate him. Yes, and... but he was part of the greatest scene in all cinematic history. Oh, where they arm wrestle? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is, a, that like, is a great... Focuses on their like sweaty, like baby-oiled-up arms. It's a, That is amazing. But, all right. Well, thank you, Brendan. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Unlike the Throwdowns. Um, yeah, this is fun. I kind of like the idea of taking a an actor and doing two different characters like there's a lot of a lot of possibilities there so i'll have to revisit that dynamic another time but um so really quick if you're interested if you like this episode i hope you did um you can check out our other unlikely throwdowns as well where we the whole premise is we take characters from different things and make them fight each other that podcast is available on all major podcasting network uh platforms and so is our other podcast brothers born podcast where we talk about various aspects of like nerd culture and sometimes personal lives and music. It's it's a pretty much a uh, what do you call that? A kitchen sink podcast. It's, it's or a smorgasbord. Smorgasbord topics. Lots of different things we talk about. Brendan's been a guest on there too. Um. So yeah, check it out. Those are both available. Like I said, on major podcasting platforms as well as our website. Kevin, what's our website? Um. www brothersbornmedia.com there they are i Excellent. totally forgot what it was for a second that, that was Man. embarrassing <laughs> it's embarrassing at least at least you knew what it was uh, i called yeah, david yeah, up for not knowing it a couple weeks ago um, that's true and and we also um we need we have every once in a while one wants to throw up like a little blog post that yes. gives us our views on something random um yes you had one on the weezer albums and uh i had one on bomb flowers a yes. couple others all the ones I, I have a couple I've written that we haven't published yet because we're editing them make sure that it makes sense um because Kevin but, wrote them it's because Kevin I wrote them and I, my, yeah my grammar is terrible uh but I will say they all kind of reflect Nintendo stuff so I don't know maybe I have a weird obsession I don't know <laughs> let's check that all out check all of that out um also I recently streamed with uh, uh the first the demo for final fantasy 7 rebirth so it's available on twitch and it'll be available on youtube as well so uh enjoy hanging out with y'all today and we'll catch you next time see you later thanks for having me hey, always a pleasure of course